I, you know, it's just a little bit different. Morning guys and welcome back to Warner Farms. So dad was going to do some spraying this morning. Yeah, the water needs to be turned on. But uh, yesterday when we talked to our salesman when he was out, uh, he said, or we asked him about seeing if we could have somebody come out, like a technician, and just have us, have him do a walkthrough with us on uh, everything on this sprayer. That way dad's familiar with it. I'm totally familiar with it then. And uh, we have a complete, really good understanding of er everything on this sprayer. And actually, Dad got a phone call this morning from down at Winnemag, down at Greenmark, and they're going to have a technician up within the hour, first thing this morning. So that's going to be awesome. We're going to get a complete walkthrough on the sprayer. I'm pretty familiar with most everything on here. Uh, it's just going through the sprayer system itself, like the solution command system and stuff like that, and the direct inject. But otherwise, I pretty much understand most of it. This is totally foreign to dad. Uh, the command arm itself wasn't really too foreign to me whatsoever with being in that eight, that 9RX last fall and understanding button layout and stuff like that. And also YouTube helps as well. Watching some videos on there on the sprayers and stuff and seeing, okay, this is what these buttons are, this and that, blah, 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 and the new hydro handle and this and that. But I've seen the new hydro handle and so has dad down at the farm show. We've just never paid that close of attention to it because we never thought that this would ever be a reality, but now it is. So that's pretty awesome. So uh, Barry, I guess, is gonna be coming up today also. Still can't get over that 120 foot boom. This is awesome. Absolutely love this. Glad I spent three hours last night in the cab going through the Gen 4 displays. All right, should have a data file sitting here because I used wireless data transfer. Let this boot up. Now manager, I think is up. All right. Right here. Import from USB drive. Import, oh, here we go. Import from receive files. Right here. Okay, this is cool. Wireless data transfer. This is slick. All right, so setup data. I don't need flags. Guidance, import profile, implement profiles, no. Because apparently, like, when you do setup files, you have to have a machine and an implement, so I literally just tagged the planner on here, so... Guidance, boundaries, setup data, import. And we should be good to go. The tech's probably going to give me some recommendations on um, screen layouts. I mean, I've got this on my extended display just for ease of visibility and stuff there. Um, but again, yeah, he might give me some pointers on on some stuff like I got my direct inject page there I probably won't have him walk me through that right now just because we're just doing burn down and we're not gonna be playing with the direct inject but I just want to have that set up so I guess the uh, sprayer tech is still working on the sprayer that he was working on down at Winnemac which isn't a big deal because we've got most of the nozzles put on uh, the rest of the nozzles of this kind are on our sprayer so we can't finish putting all those on until we get done spraying 30 acres i did pressure wash the inside of this out it was horrendous what it looked like um so i'm just going to get this wiped out real nice that way it's ready to put whatever we need to put in there spare parts nozzle bodies caps anything gloves uh adapters anything we need to put in there so it's all cleaned up and ready to go and then I'm going to work on just playing inside the cab a little bit more, getting a little bit more familiar with it. And uh, I'm guessing sometime this afternoon, because it's getting close to lunchtime, uh, the sprayer tech will be out and uh, he'll walk us through all this. And it sounds like we're going to be able to get an RTK module for that globe. So that's good. He sent us a purchase agreement this morning for that. So now we'll have three globes, two Starfire 6000s and one 3000 with uh, all RTK.
right. We should be just about done with that plot. I just came back and got a 1077. We're over on the big irrigated field. We're going to hopefully get that knocked out all tonight. That's if the alternator cooperates. We had uh, an issue with the planter. Thought it was with the tractor. Thought it was actually the brown box. Then at one point we thought it was the planter uh, seed star control box, uh, which we've actually had to replace that before. Then we thought it was the planter isobus computer brain board. And then uh, we figured it out that the uh, brown box somehow reset itself and I don't know we got it reconfigured so it was funny the John Deere tech that was coming out to uh, uh, teach me on the sprayer when he called dad to get the address he uh, goes like can you work on planters he's like yeah no problem he goes like well good I got an electrical issue that I can't figure out and uh, so he got that fixed for us and then uh, ran me through the sprayer and that was awesome so big shout out to green mark for doing that worked out really well and uh, now i've got a really really good understanding it's actually a lot easier and a lot simpler than what i was thinking it was going to be so really cut and dry and simple so that's good um they also got the gen 4 monitors updated in there so that's good uh just needing the globe but like i said i can grab a globe off the 8530 and use that if I need to temporarily play around with it in the field or uh, even use it in the field until we get our globe, the third globe back. We should be just getting done with the plot and there's 16 corn numbers in the plot ranging anywhere from 100 day uh, to 113 day. Last pass. So 16 numbers starting from here all the way up to the other side of the planter there. This is kind of typically where we always do our corn plot. This year we did not put the bean plot, obviously. If you guys watched the previous videos, we put that a mile and a half down the road. Well, last night we planted till around midnight, and there's just under, I would say, between 20 and 30 acres left in that field. I believe there should be enough fertilizer down in that tank that I can go get another 100 acre load on that front tank. That back tank still has 60 acres worth of no quadrant in it, which is going to be used up on a farm that will hopefully get moved to today. Then I can go later today and get two 100 acre batches on because if I can go get 100, uh, 100 acres in that front tank, oh look at all the deer out there, out in the alfalfa. That's pretty cool. One, two, three, four, five. Five of them out there. That's cool. And if I can go get two 100 acre batches this afternoon, uh, that'll put us pretty far ahead, at least as far as what we can get done, uh, depending on how far we get today. If we move over to another farm later this, ap late this afternoon, or if we uh, push that off till tomorrow just depending on how the day goes. 100 acre batch is 2350 gallon. These tanks hold uh, 2800. We don't ever fill them full because well we just don't so uh ooh 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 we're right at about 500 gallon if I go get 2,350 gallon, that is not going to fit. So he needs to plant some and pump some out before I go get fertilizer first thing this morning. Dad's going out to go spray that last 30 acres out on the sprayer. And, alright, 720, 720, right back there is what I need. Alright, this is going to probably get planted tomorrow. All right, get both those skids loaded up. That's what we're going to need today. Throw that pallet off. And maybe, just maybe, we'll play with the sprayer later today. So I need to grab eight bags of 1077 to get loaded on that pallet onto the truck. That way we can finish plant where we're at, and then I'll get that 720 loaded up later. That's 
that's why we have the lift gate. I love that. Put seat on the back. Love it. right now I'd prefer to have him pump that out at least as close as what he can that way I can fit a hundred gallon or a hundred acres worth in there to make it easier on filling the quadrant that's the only reason why we're doing I'm trying to stay at hundred acre batches just to make it simpler uh, for metering out the uh, quadrant RS because we're not using a metering pump we're just eyeballing it and with that being at a 1.5 gallon to the acre, it makes things really simple uh, on a 275 gallon tote to just pump out 150 gallons. So that's why I'm just trying to keep them at 100 acre batches. 120 would push it over 2,800 gallon. You could do 110 acre batches, but even at 2,500, I think it's like 2,585 or 2,535 gallon, that still wouldn't fit in there right now. So. He's just gonna have to pump some out and get some planted before I go over there and get fertilizer. All right, so we're gonna pump the, we're gonna plant the planter down and uh, get this field wrapped up. And then I'll go get fertilizer because I gotta go back to the farm before I go over to Malden to pump quadrant in. Because we pump our micronutrients in first and then we go over and get fertilizer. That way when they pump in all the uh, starter, the, 20, uh, the 32 and the 1034O, what we're running for starter mix, um, it agitates all the micronutrients in. That way we don't have to uh, worry about sticking the hose back in there and agitating it because the way we have to agitate, if we need to agitate those tanks, is uh, we gotta stick the three inch hose up into, the up into the tender, into the lid, to agitate over in the top, so, which I really don't like doing, especially in the back tank. Alright, I just got off the phone with Dad. 60 acres. So in the back tank, there's 60 acres with no micronutrients, no quadrant RS. So 60 acres, no quadrant RS check. What we're going to do, because co-lines at Malden is not going to be open tomorrow, we're going to, I'm going to get rid of an odd amount of quadrant that we have sitting over there from leftover from beans. Basically, it's the same stuff that we ran on beans, the quadrant is. So I'm going to put 165 gallon in this tank, get this up to 110 gallon, which would be 2585. And then the back tank, there's 1400, I figured there's probably 1410 gallon back there, 60 acres worth, at least based on the sight gauge and looking in the tank there should be so uh, we're going to just forget about the quadrant rs check right now put that over on the river over on the sand along the road and go and pump 150 gallon of quadrant in there and pump 800 gallon of 1034o and 32 so 400 of each into that back tank to get that up to a 100 100 acre mix back there so then we'll have 210 acres between the two tanks and then once we get those pumped down, we'll get fertilizer tonight. If we hopefully get these tanks pumped down, which shouldn't be a problem today, and uh, get fertilizer for tomorrow. So just doing a whole bunch of figuring and trying to plan ahead because they're not gonna be open tomorrow. Mostly because they got a lot more rain over in Porter County than what we did here in LaPorte County. So it's just one of those things where uh, not a lot of guys are running where they're at versus where we're at.
dad's doing right now you can see those little short passes we plant our dry corners on this on the irrigated fields at like 22 to 23,000 in some cases even down to 21,000 so he'll even plant the end rows and uh, do that knob over there that corner over there gets hit pretty good down there the pivot covers most of the low ground so it's mainly just this corner that corner and part of that corner and then we'll change the population i believe out here we're gonna run 34 or 36 thousand just because it's stupid windy out i'm not gonna put any chemical in the sprayer i want to load it with water and go down to my field just down the road that 20 acres and just make some passes out there and uh, see about getting this thing dialed in and uh, playing around with it and then eventually uh, that way when the weather breaks maybe tomorrow but they're still kind of talking 50, upwards of 15 mile per hour winds but maybe if there's a calm point tomorrow put some chemical in it if i feel comfortable with it and uh, start burning down this rye some guys have always asked how do you get up on the sprayer get up on the front tire you got a platform here you got the platform there to stand and look inside the tank but you can stand here also and we're in just a little bit different Just a little bit different. Just a little. sticky fertilizer pudding on over to the tender that we use on some of the uh, fertigation tanks that we have out at the pivot because some of the tanks uh, need this adapter that's out in the field. For duper valuable Starfire 6000 globe that's probably worth $15,000 if I were to sell it right now. I could probably get 20 maybe for that. Don't want to drop that. know what I'm looking for here. Is it on the armrest? No. Aha! Look at that. <laughs> Heated and ventilated seat. I knew it was on here. I couldn't figure out where the switch was. That's cool. <laughs>
address that because we can we can water out of this cam lock right here but we're pumping that's pretty neat not spraying i was though just water nothing in it just water just practicing just working on trying to get dialed in where i need to turn when i need to turn and uh just practicing turning on the ends essentially just trying to get used to it so so far i really like it i love having that extended monitor right there makes turning on the ends very very helpful so so far i really love it head back to the farm play with the monitor a bit more and I don't know, maybe fill it up again and practice some more. And down. Well, I think I'm comfortable enough that we can get them batch mixed up first thing in the morning and I can go down to uh, one of our farms actually that we're planting on this evening and do some burn down on some cereal rye that's uh, over knee high. Dad remembered uh, I was down there helping him and uh, he remembered he's like hey do you want to do that Zyway trial down here? Uh, we were actually going to do all 40 acres down there and he's like well what about doing it down in Stark County also? So we're going to do uh, 20 acres down on the farm that we're at now and then 20 acres down in Stark County. So this is 16 ounces to the acre five gallon will do 40 acres so obviously two and a half will do 20 acres so I'm just going to grab a two and a half and head down there and we're going to give Zyway LFR from FMC a try. So I was under the understanding down on Grandma's we're going to do NCGA down there. That's still correct. <laughs> We're gonna do two numbers down there, 953 and 1213, 20 acres each. And Dad decided that that is now going to be my NCGA field. So Dad's going to take the other 40 on the corner and deem it his NCGA field with 720. Well, I guess we'll go head to head and see, uh, we'll kind of deviate from the plan maybe, uh, or if anything, maybe copy the exact plan that uh, we have, I guess now you could say, down on my NCGA field. Uh, we'll see what Dad decides to do, if he wants to replicate exactly what we're doing down there, or uh, if he's going to deviate from the fertilizer plan, because as of right now, uh, the starter will be different because our micronutrient mixes will be slightly different, and uh, our populations are going to be different. He planted that at 32,000, and uh, what I have that going down as is 36,000. So it'll be interesting that on that. And uh, as far as side dress goes and foliar applications go, we'll see uh, what dad wants to do on his and uh, compared to uh, what we're gonna do, I guess down on my NCGA field. So this will be pretty cool. Right cover crop looks amazing. Well over knee high out there and it looks awesome. This is awesome to plant into, absolutely ideal planting conditions. 75 degrees out right now. This is perfect. Hammer down. This rye is actually the tallest stuff that we're planting into this year. Typically a lot of the stuff is about shin high. Uh, that we've planted into so far this year and what we're going to pretty much plant into the rest of the season. This is actually one of the fields and including across the road that I'll be spraying more than likely tomorrow. That's the only thing. The rye will get hung up on the drag chains a little bit, but that is such a minimal issue. It has zero effect on uh, emergence or anything on the furrow whatsoever so just one of those things when we get out of this 
thick awry that uh, we just got to clean the drag chains, but otherwise uh, works out pretty good. Absolutely love doing this. This is what I wish we can do on all of our acres, which this is what we've strived to. And we're at 85, about 85, close to 90% of our acres are like this. So not this thick. This was only, the reason why this is this thick is because uh, we got this established early enough in the fall. Put that in the tender that way when we're filling in for a later we've got it in the tender already So he's got 160 gallon of infurrow. 100 acres will do roughly 30 acres. Got to get it down to 60 gallon or less. That way we can add our uh, zyway for the 20 acres because we can't just dump this in. Uh, it has to be at 16 ounces to the acres. So at three gallon to the acre rate that we're running on the infurrow, roughly, uh, because we're just running this through a Hineker uh, rate controller. It's supposed to be a systemic fungicide. Plant takes it up in furrow. It's supposed to be just as good as doing a fungicide pass at uh, VT to R2 or R3. So this will be really interesting. I don't know how good it is against tar spot. There's not a lot of data out there against tar spot. There's not a lot of data out there on tar spot to begin with on anything. So tar spot, you know, in this area, past couple years it's coming late it's coming early it's so hard to predict so this will be very interesting to see how this does against tar spot if it does really well that's really great for our area and i feel a lot of guys will be jumping on this sun but if not uh we might have to end up doing a rescue treatment uh vt to r2 application via plane uh which we already have planned on just about all of our corn ground this year i think all of our corn ground uh we're figuring on fungicide so approach prima that's our go-to fungicide we love approach prima we've been using that for years now and uh, we use that on the wheat and rye also we're going to do zyway tomorrow so after this fill up we're going to call it quits that way uh, it's easier to work in a day with this product and uh, make sure everything's working okay that way if we have any issues which we shouldn't have any issues whatsoever uh, it's just we'd rather wait, get it flagged, make sure we get it flagged in the right spot in the morning, and uh, call quits. So uh, we're not too pressed. We're not going to be able to get fertilizer anyways tomorrow, so it's just going to be an easy day. Play around with the sprayer, try and get a first load done, and uh, start doing some burn down on the cereal rye before it really gets takes off and gets away from us. So. I'm gonna go ahead and end this video here guys we're gonna finish this planter fill and uh, call it quits for this evening so thank you guys for watching as always don't forget to like comment and subscribe down below don't forget to follow me on Instagram Facebook and snapchat and I will catch you guys in the next video thanks for watching guys